Just want to say on behalf of everyone, thank you for putting together an amazing event, a very generous thing that you're doing for everyone here. And I know everybody has been enjoying the videos. So if people want to come to the one next year, how can they find it? Well, I'll be posting videos when I find out more, when this, this event's over, I'm looking at some property up in Lake Havasu. Uh, one piece is going to be 20 acres and see what the adjacent uh, lots, uh, if they're available too, to potentially get those as the build grows. But it's looking like in all likelihood we'll just put this on private land next time, our private land, not somebody else's. And we won't have to deal with permits or collecting fees from people yeah. every time and then have those fees just go to government bureaucracies instead of land that we could have been owning with it, you know? Yeah, totally. So totally. I really like Lake Havasu. Probably going to keep it in Lake Havasu, but I still have to suss out the property and how that's all going to work out. And if you guys want to uh, come to the next one, check out Enigmatic Nomadic's channel. He posts all the information for it. Stay in touch. Come out to the van build. You can meet really cool people from all walks of life out here. Yep, yep. Cool. All right, man. Thanks, Jack, for coming to the event. I really appreciate oh, it. Oh, thanks for having me, man. It's been awesome. And I really like your channel. <laughs> I like yours more. We're going to hopefully talk to two interesting, very interesting people who are full-time, um, let's see, vehicle dwellers, RV dwellers, travelers. Um, and one of them is Chris. Chris, Hi, everyone. Chris from Germany, or? Yes. Okay. And would you tell us what you do in this RV? Okay, I yeah, I live full time in this RV now and I'm a video game composer. So I've been doing that for 31 years. I started out with one of these, Formula 64. <laughs> and um, uh, that was in, at the uh, end of the 80s. And uh, the reason why I got this is I always wanted to own a synthesizer. But um, when I was young, I couldn't afford one. so. The Commodore 64 was the next best thing because it has a synthesizer sound chip. And then I started programming, I made music with it and ended up working for games and made game music ever since. Yeah, and, and could, you, could you briefly describe the setup here? Like what, what is all this stuff? What can you do with it? So yeah, that's my, that's my workspace, my studio space. So I got my keyboard here where I can, you know, I can play, see or forget something. Interesting. So you make the music for music for video games. Yes. Interesting. And you're full time in the RV. Correct. Yeah. I'm imagining. I used to live in the Bay Area in a house. Okay. With my wife, and uh, we uh, decided to have an adventure, and we sold the house and got on the road. First in a big uh, Class A diesel, and um, now I have this, which is a little bit more flexible. Yeah. Um, so what are some of the difficulties of being in a vehicle and doing the video game composing? Um, actually not that much. I, I don't have a lot of drawbacks. Uh, particularly now I got 640 watts of solar so I can run all this equipment all day on the solar and still um, charge the batteries and have some capacity for the night. That's amazing. And what's your favorite part about being in an RV? It's just you can like you can have your view can change every day if you want. You can you can park um, at the Grand Canyon or whatever and have this uh, wonderful view, and that that inspires me also to make music. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, do you miss your mortgage or your rent? <laughs> no, I don't miss that. <laughs> Absolutely not. No, this is this is actually a pretty economical way to to live, and at the same time also meet a lot of interesting people like yourself and, and others and uh, just experience the country because in the Bay Area there we were essentially like sitting at a house constantly. Mm -hmm. and Indoors a lot I'm guessing. Yeah exactly and, yeah. and this is this is a lot more outdoor living and adventure and it's got challenges absolutely but it's also exciting and fun. Yeah now I know that rents in the Bay Area are very high for Insane. people. Yeah. yeah. It's hard for a young person to even afford an apartment or a room there. Absolutely. Would you recommend uh, a van or something like that to them in the city? Yeah, I think it's definitely a way to deal with the um, um, housing prices. Um, 
but uh, you you probably would need a plan you know you need some income and stuff like that to really make it work yeah 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 I wouldn't say to anyone who wants to just be lazy or homeless but this is a fantastic way to cut your expenses and and have a more Absolutely. enjoyment with your with your job yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. definitely that's cool so um, one thing also I would like to do I have I have a lot of fans from like the 80s till now um, that support my music and and um, I, I worked on some games that um, that got famous at that time which ones well, there were some early games in the end of the 80s. One is the Jana Sisters, which is a big franchise um, that has been ported to the PC a couple years ago. So that's pretty well known. By the way, my cat's up there. I don't know what she's doing. Um, I have never seen her up there. Okay, anyway, so uh, and um, another well-known is actually in the early 2000s, I worked on the Star Wars franchise on Nintendo. Wow. Uh, the Star Wars Rock Squadron series. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, oh, that's fun. And uh, yeah, and then now I just, I also do a lot of music just for fun, not for um, games. Uh, and I've got a Patreon going and fans are supporting me for the music and stuff like that. And uh, if, if you want, I can play one of the pieces. Sure. So, this is inspired by, um, a little bit inspired by Blade Runner. So. Oh, that's so cool. So, you don't quite fit, you don't quite fit the RV, like the RVer in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah, because you have this incredible setup here, and uh, you know, you're not like a retiree, right. not that everybody is retired in the RVs, but you're actively working in a mobile home essentially, like somewhere, a home that you can yeah. drive different places. Yes. Yeah. And then... And one of the things, as I said, is I mean, I was I felt kind of stuck up there in the house. Uh, didn't really travel a lot, and I wanted to actually s experience the country. And uh, I would probably not have done it if I hadn't gone to Burning Man. I was um, in 2014, the first time there, and I saw a whole different way of thinking and and experiencing things. And then I discovered YouTube channels like yours and Bob Welts and, and others and uh, that really inspired me to think about, hey, there's more to life than just sitting in this house working for the mortgage. Yeah. And um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's really like freedom. It's, to, it's total freedom. You, you don't like a place, you just go somewhere else. Exactly. And, and also, I didn't want to wait until you're retired and maybe your body craps out on you to experience this because it is a little bit of you. you I mean, there's some physical challenges doing this. You know, I mean, when you have to go to the dump or whatever, it's like that. There's physical activities that you don't have in the house usually. Mm -hmm. So I didn't want to be like 70 and uh, not being able to do this and then regretting that I haven't done it or something. Yeah. Yeah. Have you heard of the story about the Mexican fisherman? No. Uh, it's, you should, yeah. I should look that up. Oh yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. 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 It's about enjoying the moment versus working your life and then being able to retire later so then you can enjoy the moment. <laughs> That's exactly it. Yeah. Yeah. It's about enjoying it now, basically. Yeah. 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 Totally. Cool. Could I, uh, take very, yes. Very nice chatting with you. Yeah. Nice well, to well, meet you.